Chris here from anabolicmen.com where we bring you 100% research-backed men's health advice. Back again with Tim Burzens, metabolism thyroid expert and independent researcher, contributor to anabolicmen.com. And today we're going to be talking about uh, your metabolism and how to know if you have low metabolism or if you have a slow metabolism or imbalance in your thyroid gland. So uh, what, are the, what are the main signs of someone watching this video? They suspect they might have a slow meta metabolism, but how do they know? This is actually uh, one of the coolest things I feel like I learned when I started researching this was that there's an at-home measurement that you can do that's better than thyroid tests, better than you know, any kind of thing you can get from the doctor to say if you have low thyroid, and that is simply your body temperature. Uh, yeah. Most people overlook that, but uh, you know, 98.6 is where it's supposed to be. And recently, average temperatures in like in the nation have just dropped to 98.2 as an average. So they're they're on the decline because thyroid's starting to go down. One of the most important things you can do is just take a normal thermometer, stick it under your arm first thing in the morning before you do anything. Take a temperature, measure each arm a couple times, kind of get like a good average. But if you're below 97.8, that's a really good sign that something's not right. That your metabolism is slow. Th you know, thyroid's not producing the way it should be. And in essence, that you're operating off of that stress metabolism instead of you know the, the efficient recovered metabolism. Where were you when you first started measuring yourself first? I was down. Uh, so the lowest I've had was like 96.3. I think was wow. was where sure. where I started. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was it's kind of crazy because I've even heard people go down to, to 95 or 94. And uh -huh. there was I don't know who it was, but there was a, a vegan author who promoted having a low like a 93 degree temperature as like a good thing, what? which doesn't make any sense to me no, at all. No yeah. But yeah, you know, taking the right steps to in increase my metabolism and then continuing to measure and track every morning, you know, first thing in the morning, because that's when you're, you're getting your, your base temperature. It's not yeah. affected by, you know, activity or, or, or outside, uh, you know, food and stuff like that. Uh, you can get like that really good, that good measurement to show you what's going on. And as you track it over time, uh, you can, you'll hopefully be seeing it go up and, and assuming, you know, assuming you're doing the right things to help your body recover. Yeah, and did you see your, your own? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it got up to 97.8. Now I'm still just trying to optimize it, see how high I can get it, and yeah. keep, keep pushing it up and everything. And uh, the other one that's connected to that is actually heart rate, which a lot of people don't uh, necessarily look at either. But lower heart rate is usually indicative of a lower metabolism. A lot of people see lower heart rate as a good thing, as you know, you're in shape for, yeah, like you're in shape for endurance uh, you know, events. Yeah, exactly, cardiovascularly. But the thing is, a lot of, you know, we talked in a previous video about how endurance training was actually bad for your metabolism, and it, it stresses your body out and teaches it to, to conserve energy. And, uh, you know, that's actually a huge implication for why endurance training athletes have a lower heart rate, is that it could actually be an adaptation of their body slowing down when they're not exercising. Yeah, makes uh, total sense. Yeah. You know, I said 97.8 to 98.2 was good for temperature, but heart rate up around like 80, 85 is really where where you want it to be for really good uh, for yeah. good metabolic health. That's um, what I health. found when I was, I used to do triathlon. Oh yeah, I right. had like stupid low. I think the lowest heart rate I ever had was like 45. Oh wow. And uh, <laughs> and then when I started doing weight training and everything, it's back up in like the 80 range. Oh so nice. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting that you have like that, the um, two different types of training that you can actually like look back and yeah, see. It was a very clear difference. Yeah. And it, but everyone always taught that that was, oh, is it, you're in such good shape if you have exactly. low, low yeah, heart rate. Exactly, a good thing. It's like you're very efficient, but maybe your metabolism's screwed up. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know. Now, so the, cool, the, the, sorry, the interesting thing about both temperature and heart rate is that stress actually will raise them in the short term if you're you know, under some sort of stress. So if you do take your temperature and your heart rate in the morning, it's really important to, uh, you, know, you don't have to do this every single day, but after you eat breakfast, 20, 30 minutes later, take your temperature and your heart rate again. Now, ideally, they should be higher because the food is starting to digest, raising your metabolism, shutting down that stress response. Mm -hmm. And so it should, uh, you know, if your stress response gets shut down, your temperature should go up. Now, if it goes down or if it stays the same, that's an indication that it was uh, artificially raised from a stress response and that when you ate, it shut the stress response down and so the temperature and heart rate dropped back down. So it's kind of like if you know that you're having that kind of pattern, then it gives you a really good idea of like, okay, well, when I wake up, there's a stress response going on right now, yeah. and that you should, you know, look at that and try to get that taken care of. Any other indicators? Yeah, there's uh, there's actually two more that um, I find really helpful. One is the temperature of your extremities, most like your hands and your feet. Basically, what happens during a stress response is your body will try to take your blood and shunt it to muscles and to your brain to try to get your body moving to allow your muscles to run away from whatever danger you're. You're under and, and to do that it tightens the blood vessels in your hands and your feet 
So when your hands and your feet get cold, and, and not everybody experiences this. This is just um, you know certain people, especially if you're in the low metabolism, you're more likely to experience this. But when your hands and feet get cold, it's a good sign that there's a stress response turned on. Mm -hmm. And you can usually turn off that stress response by eating a high carb, high salt meal with a little fluid. Yeah, that's kind of what uh, our, our friend Carter had. He'd actually lost a ton of weight, and then he had very cold, yeah, very cold. like super cold extremities. Didn't know why. I think for months at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, he would hardly ever cut his nails, and that's the sign for metabolism too. Yeah, his because nails weren't growing. Exactly, it was weird. which is kind of crazy when you think about it, that your body would actually shut down something like nail so, growth and hair growth. But for a stress response, it makes total sense mm -hmm. where your body's going to basically shuttle resources away from stuff that is kind of not as necessary. Yeah. Like, do you really need your nails to grow? You yeah. know, you need them to... If the lion eats you on the savanna, or does it, do you care that your nails... Yeah. Are... <laughs> and so, um, and the last way, I, the last thing I like to look at is your weight change in regards to your calorie intake. So a lot of times what I'll do with clients is I'll have them start at their maintenance calorie intake, um, you know, in addition to doing the salt and, and more carbs and cutting down fluids, stuff like that. But then I'll have them raise their calorie intake 200 calories every single week. And what we can see is that if you're tracking your weight consistently and you hit a certain point where you start to gain weight, you know that you kind of tipped over the metabolism over what your maintenance is. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of like balance it. If you, if you tip over, bring it back a little bit, try to raise your metabolism and then raise it again. Yeah. And it kind of gives you an idea where you're sitting at calorie wise. Yeah. And there is a, there's a point where if you have the optimized metabolism where you could be eating quite a bit of food oh, yeah. <laughs> without putting on any fat yeah, yeah any fat um, yeah i've had clients take it from 2300 all the way to 3500 range which is yeah i mean that's over a thousand calories that's pretty crazy yeah and you hear and it's mostly from carbohydrates right a yeah, lot of a lot of, of increase fructose um, yeah fructose carbohydrates salt reducing the fluid basically all the things that really shut down that stress response oh you mean the increase in calories the increase, the in, calories, increase yeah. in calories from carbs which is so against what a lot of people preach mm -hmm. carbs are the devil Carbs make you fat. Yeah, so, which is like all they're doing is creating all these people who are turning on stress responses from yeah. not eating enough carbs. I know. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's about it. That's those are the four things I really look at. Yeah. So that, I mean, if you if you've been wondering if you had a slow metabolism, if you're if you're just not optimized, maybe your thyroid's not healthy. These are some good indicators that you might need some help in that arena. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Anabolic Men YouTube channel. You can go over to anabolicmen.com and find a ton of free inf information, courses, articles, everything over there, more videos. And uh, we will see you on the next video.